Guys, we're live now. Are we? Okay, yeah. sorry people. Once again, technical difficulties. Ew. Yeah, so hopefully if you're waiting, if you're one of the seven people waiting for the live <laughs> version, you will figure this out. Uh, but you are now at the drop live with Robbie, Jared, and Thomas from Believe in the Run. Episode four. Episode four, this is a big one. This is a milestone because it's like, you made it past the one. Yeah. 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 And we want to say it's, it's, it's great, actually. The numbers are growing. We saw, I saw how many people watched last week. It was over a thousand. So that's amazing. Like, because I thought it would be like my mom, maybe Rob's mom. She didn't even know what to do for me. And, and then me refreshing. <laughs> yeah. 900 times. A, I might, it might be a lean in. So <laughs> one of the things that was on the drop this week is we did publish a um, Apple Watch review. We did. Yeah. That's up there on the site. I am not someone who's into details. You might know that about me. I'm a big picture guy. So a watch has got to work out of the box. Thomas gets like three words into a DC Rainmaker review before falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm asleep at night, I throw on that. Maybe there's another, <laughs> there's another uh, uh, running shoe review site that puts me to sleep. Uh, Is this the lead in the run? <laughs> no, I won't. <love> All right. <laughs> Is it Jamie? No. Jamie's not a site. Right, we're not going to call YouTube you channel. channel. Yeah. You don't try to guess. <laughs> you, know, you know what it is. Anyway, so the watch I have when I use a watch or something, it has to be pretty intuitive. I can't. I'm not going to be like Robbie just reviewed the Koros watch. You can watch that video on YouTube. You just put that up this week. Yeah, there will not be a video review of the Apple Watch, but the Koros watch uh, is informative. Robbie puts it through the test. You check things out. He make he uses stuff on the watch that he doesn't use when he runs just to test it out. This this review I basically just went and uh, just ran. I ran, start stop. Used the apps. I used the Nike running app. I used the Strava app. Um, overall, I think it's great. It it's kind of like if you're gonna buy a Porsche and race it, you probably want like a 911. But if you're going to the grocery store, you probably want like the Cayenne. The Cayenne. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to yoga and Lululemon <laughs> and Whole Foods. That's the Porsche you want. If you want it for performance, you're not gonna get that. Um, you might use it to drive to your performance Porsche. And I kind of feel like that's that's what the Apple Watch is. It's great, it's it's fancy, it's nice, does it all, it's just not gonna deliver what I need out of a running watch. For Which a is laps. what, your training? Well, yeah, I, I like to do laps, I like to you know, use the training feature, I'll go on a Garmin, I'll set up a workout, uh, that my coach gives me, and then I don't have to think about it. my watch will buzz and tell me, okay, now it's, you're doing 400 at this pace for this long, you know, whatever 400 is. I think, yeah, someone mentioned that you could do laps and stuff, but it didn't seem like an intuitive. No, he also mentioned at the end of his comment that he works at Apple. He knows, <laughs> he knows, he knows everything. He knows. Yeah, he uh, has to. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, back to the power piece. Beautiful sound, great for workout. The only thing I don't like about them is the over the ear thing. Like DC, I like to wear a hat, and it, it just, you have those over the ear, they bounce sometimes, and then throw sunglasses on there too, and it's like, kish, kish, like my head, head is banging around. Other than that, the sound quality is amazing. They pair really fast. The, the charging case, I don't know why they did it. The Apple uh, ear pods, those ones, perfect case. You could even throw it in your backpack or something when you're running or a small pocket in the back of your shorts. If your headphones were to die, you can just put them back in there, recharge them. This thing is, as you can see, almost as big as my head. Yeah. I'm holding it's it there, it's probably like bigger. Um, it's giant, we call it a dad wallet. It's like a, <laughs> a George Costanza yeah. wallet. It's basically a hard boiled egg that you'd have to carry with it. So you better hope that the nine hours, uh, your charge is enough. If it isn't, you can put them in the case for five minutes and get an hour and a half of charge in five minutes, but that's it for the oh, PowerPoints Pro. Read, read the review online. How much were they again? Because I think we got $1 One million dollars. <laughs> uh, they are they expensive. Well they're, they're 250 <laughs> bucks. I mean, it has to be the highest, so, the high end of... Yeah, either this books, right? or a pair yeah. of the Vaporfly Next. Yeah. So yeah. You, the choice is yours. Hopefully they last longer than the Vaporfly yeah. She's like, I'm so happy some of you <laughs> waited for this, by the way. True believers. Twelve strong right now. All right. Uh, so, Robbie, uh, what was next on your agenda you want to hit? Well, I guess we can do, I know we covered it a lot, so let's just get it out of the way really quick, but the uh, Adidas Adizero Boston, uh, Boston 8, which we 
we talked about it on previous shows. So I don't want to really get into it. Yeah, much more. Um, but, but anyways, the la- the written review is up where Thomas and I uh, actually review it in a written manner. Yeah. Um, and then we tell a story about uh, <laughs> about Megan's pet goldfish. Yeah. The, if you don't want to read about the shoe, you do want to learn about Megan's goldfish. It's it's semi nonfiction. It's that I'd say it's ninety percent nonfiction. Ninety percent nonfiction. <laughs> It's embellished fiction. Like there's some parts that are remembered as we would imagine them, right. rather than. But that's all I remember. Actually, yeah. you don't remember. Yeah. So then it's 100 percent true. So uh, more importantly than the shoot review, go read the uh, bubbles the goldfish. Review. Yeah, bubbles the goldfish. There'll be a quiz about it on next week's live session. Uh, it will start referring to bubbles. And I was actually thinking that from now on, when we do a review, we get like a little goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to. Uh, so I dare somebody to swallow it. Everyone says that shoe runs small. Uh, I didn't find that, did you? Uh, I felt, it felt a little small. The toe box seemed fine, but like, like I said, remember I, I felt like it was yeah. like a little tight, like. I, I think that if you think it ran small, it's because you don't have a narrow foot. But that's, you got a size half up, remember? Oh, no, I did. Hey, guess what? <laughs> it does run small. Because the 11 could be fine. <laughs> and normally it's in That's why it felt fine to me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it does run small. Uh, typically with a Racing shoe, you want a snugger fit, and um, but if it's too small for you and not comfortable, it's gonna hurt your toenails. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> toenails are for people who like feet. Yeah, and I guess so. I'm not into this. Wise words. <laughs> speak, speaking of marathons, though, uh, when you live with Megan, yeah, but and this is what you get in the mail. You go to a marathon, and she bonks, has one of the worst marathons she's had in recent times, but then in the mail gets an age group award. That is what it's That's like. a major city right there. Yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland Marathon. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Established 1978, not the city, the marathon. And uh, But when you live with Megan, these awards show up all the time. If I could flip the camera and can show you our wall, we've got like a Megan uh, Museum of Achievements. <laughs> so, but that's just a side note. Yeah. But so you gotta be careful. You want to keep talking about Megan? Show that gorgeous. Um, yeah, years. might as well move on to some more Megan things. Yeah. Megan, do you want to come and talk, tell people about it? Yeah. No. Camera shy. I'm gonna take this shit home. So I think it, I want. it seems like the shit Cinderella. Was it looking is. For. This is a like glass wow. slipper. It's beautiful. It, it's hard to tell you <laughs> how beautiful this shoe is in person. It just doesn't translate into photos. Can you get close? Can you get the pearls? Pearl can you ever see any of the pearlage? Make can you see some of the uh, In the midsole, this is. You really can't capture it on the camera. It's insane. It's super light, super rigid, teeth like a beaver. I don't know. <laughs> or a shark teeth. Shark. Yeah. Oh, more like shark teeth. Yeah. Um, and it fits like a foot condom. Like this slides on, and there's no extra space at all. And Megan, you just ran like a little. 25 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And how fast did you feel? Fast. It makes you run on your on your toes. Makes oh, you yeah. it, it makes you run on your toes. Put it flat like this, remember? If you put it flat, uh, yeah. you can see, you see there's only air underneath of it. Part that touches basically yeah. like right here. Yeah. That's pretty wild. And there's not even there's no uh, rubber or anything on the heel. And this is so like squishy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even feel on the run on that. Do you want to see how much it weighs? It, nothing. It weighs zero. <laughs> Four four point two five ounces. Wow. That's like that's four ounces. That's like uh, my earwax. I could have like four of these shoes, that's and that would equal like <laughs> the weight of my one. That's the difference in weight. Yeah, but <laughs> it's light. <laughs> For a shoe, it's really light. Earwax is very heavy. I love this. Um, the heel here it makes looks like a marshmallow. I just want to stick on a. Yeah. Stick it and put it on a little bit of Barbecue fire. it. Put it in between a couple yeah. graham crackers. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think anyway, Jared would actually start crying. This is probably one of the, the most exciting uh, shoes I've seen just from a design and um, execution. Uh, I wish I had a reason to run a mile really fast. I'm supposed to get a pair of two. Somehow mine got lost in the warehouse. Um, but it, uh, I, I, I mean, it, I would be excited to break six minutes right now. You so. think no, you have to break five in it, or, or you're gonna hate yourself. That's and true. That's what they said. They said you're gonna hate the shoe. Well, do you think that they knew you weren't gonna break five minutes? So they were probably. Probably. <laughs> we lost, lost it. it in the warehouse. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we love you guys. Uh, we're gonna send you some shoes. Uh, yours to happen to get lost, but Megan's made it. Yeah. <laughs> the one who gets medals for doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's no coincidence they showed up at the same time. Why don't we Why don't we go yeah. into our other New Balance shoe that's here? Your Your boy, yeah, the your Vongo replacement. Hopefully, uh, you. Yeah. I don't. I. This isn't even my shoe. Jared may or may not be getting this shoe. Yeah, they sent it on. to me. Now this New Balance shoe, I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, what the eight seventy, the the V five uh, is yeah. back after like a four five year hiatus. Stability. Yeah, that's a good looking shoe, and there's a cool tag. This is. So you didn't love the Vongo. <laughs> I did not love the Vongo. The update to it. Um, I think the the upper it wasn't. It was a lot more. It felt a lot more narrow, for it, and then my heel was slipping and everything and. See how this has some cushion? The Vongo had like no real cushion in the heel counter. Um, so you're, you're gonna, you think 870 is gonna work? Yeah, and you can see I mean the, the stability that's yeah. going on here, yeah. which is definitely more dense than the rest. But still of it. for a stability shoe, I mean it's got a pretty narrow throat here coming through. So I like that because it still gives you the shape and feel of a faster shoe, even though it's stability. And the toe down, I think the toe down on this shoe. It's a pretty hot looking shoe. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think it could be okay. For me, this foam feels really firm, but I guess if you're a stability, you're looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, we might have one of our thoughts on it. Megan's reviewing it. So, yeah. I'll get her to some yeah. point. I, and I wanted to revisit um, the Saucony Type A9 because I did a track workout in it. And I have to say, I. I really enjoy this shoe. I know it's kind of out of vogue right now to have a racing flat or a shoe like this. Um, and this fits so well. The the way that you can lock it down, the lacing system in this is amazing. It's kind of got like the sides like the Streak Six had, yeah. And it pulls it pulls tight though with these these lace. Uh, the lacing system works extremely well. Hold my foot in. Shoe feels light on your foot. I mean, this is another one that's like weighs nothing. I think this is, uh, I'm gonna say for Wait, me, you guess. You have to guess. I'm gonna say 6.25. Whoa, uh, 6.4. Pretty close, that's, that's, good. that's pretty, pretty good. Um, I really like it, it's really fun. If you're doing track workouts, I don't think these shoes are that much, I don't know how much they are, um, but I'm gonna guess they're probably at around 100 or less. Um, if you're doing track workouts, you just want something to switch it up, Use different leg muscles. I definitely felt more of my calves and my feet and everything. I felt the muscles in there working a little bit different with this shoe. It was a nice uh, refresher from so many cushion shoes to just go out and run something that felt a little more natural under your feet. They're, so, they're 100. They're 100 dollars. So check those out. Actually, Sorry. ninety dollars on running warehouse. Yeah, really saying say seventy-five retail at the moment. Seventy-five retail. This just keeps going down. Listen. <sighs> Get this, spice up your life. This is like getting some sriracha on your pasta. Your regular shoes or the pasta, throw this sriracha on it. Uh, once a week, do your track workout, your tempo run. I think you really have a lot of fun in the shoe. Um, at first, I was kind of like, eh, I don't really want to do this review. It seems hard and uh, just not what I'm looking at for shoes right now. But it's, it, it is a nice change up. I will tell you, after I did the track workout, that two miles back to the house, yeah. My legs were dead. I was dead, but I think it's the heat and the humidity and just think. But definitely check these out if you're interested in switching up your runs and getting a fast shoe on there. Cool. Anybody get the Vaporfly next this week? Someone asked that. Who's buying the Vaporfly next for some? Uh, Rick, I will tell you right now, Megan and I are both getting it. Are you trained about it? No. I need to get some point. I don't know. No real use for it. I'm not going to get it. I don't need either. I don't want it. Not I don't want it. We're not getting it for me. I don't <laughs> want it. <that. laughs> so Megan and I will be getting the Vaporfly next, so we'll report on it. Um, next next week, probably. Monday. Yeah, but I mean, we'll be reporting on it. Oh, next week, definitely. Yeah. If we can get this live episode thing worked out, <laughs> we'll definitely have yeah. Be prepared to yeah. go to multiple shows. But I revisited a shoe that I didn't really like last year. That a lot of people didn't really like last you year. You know, it, I think it's polarizing. Some people love this shoe. And some people did. And I think what it comes down to me was the expectations. I think I saw so many ads of a rocket going off, and I knew that it had the Zoom X in it. I mean, the name Turbo is in it. Turbo's in it. <laughs> and, you know, I run in the Vaporfly, and I was like, okay, I need this shoe better be 
the Vaporfly without a plate in it. It should feel fast, it should feel awesome, it should be light and go through. And I really felt like the original ones behind Jared's head there, um, all the way up. Oh, jeez. You know, it's right there. I, I, I looked at it earlier, I was like, should I pull it out? And I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna show it out. But the original, you can feel the weight there, too. Um, But they lost the bowling stripe too. Yeah, they lost the bowling stripe, but the shoe just, I don't know, it just felt clunky and I just wasn't loving the cushioning, it, it dampened down. It felt like a marshmallowy Pegasus. And so I wasn't expecting much. I got this one, I've only done uh, one run in it so far, but I was like, I, I might like this shoe. Like, I was like surprised, like I was like, I'm enjoying running in this shoe. I'm enjoying the feeling underfoot. And it's like, maybe it's because I'm not thinking of it as a racing shoe. I'm thinking of it as, um, it, it's like an up-tempo everyday trainer. So it has a really soft, nice feel to it with a little bit of bounce. The new upper is definitely a huge improvement over yeah, You can see it's way over this one. I mean, it's better. like <laughs> just a lot. It, it lost weight. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm definitely doing my long run in this this weekend. Um, are you gonna be there? Uh, I should be. All right. Yeah. Maybe with Jared. Last week, I think I was overheated and, and tired, and I just didn't want to run fast. And Jared, again, was just out there pushing the pace, and I was proud of you, though. Uh, you, you're definitely getting faster. Um. Anyway. So back to this. Proud Papa, right here. Yeah, I am. This Legend, is, right? <laughs> good, good job, so good kid. Um, but yeah. So I, this might turn the shoe around for me. We'll see. This one I initially felt really good about, and then it kind of went downhill. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen with this. Robbie and Megan will also be reviewing this shoe. Okay. Um, we might try to get out a, a video soon covering it, uh, depending on how long it takes you to get yours. But I think this is going to be fun. I cannot wait to get the next percent and see what the improvements are. Uh, we have, I don't have like a really fast race coming up until. I'm going to be running uh, uh, the Harrisburg. Harrisburg PA. Harrisburg okay. half in September. September 8th. Eight. September 8th. So uh, if you're in the Mid Atlantic area and you want a fun half marathon to run, come see us. Definitely going to be there for uh, the Harrisburg half. Super cheap race, super flat. Under, it's right on the Susquehanna River. Would you say it's a cheap or a great value race? Oh, yeah. If you're fast, you can get 225 bucks. Yeah, it does, yeah. It does have money awards. Uh, it, it's a great value race. Yeah, you, it really is. Yeah, $200 award for first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Megan's going to be going for it, the lady. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she, yeah, she's invited a couple Kenyans. <laughs> And we'll see how it goes. That's but. the 52 ladies are coming up for that, right? <laughs> yeah, for yeah. the first mile. Yeah. Sprint past everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You'll go so fast, yeah. you'll be able to change you your shoes break, too. If you break the marathon down into miles, why can't you use it for that? It's just 26. Right. It's just 26, 26 mile times what that is, yeah, right? You just rest for five seconds, go again. Yeah. yeah. Now, the only other thing about this shoe is some people said that it feels firmer or something like that. It's the same midsole. I don't know that they mess around with the durometer or uh, it's a fancy word for saying the stiffness of the foam, uh, the way it compresses. It feels pretty similar to me. It might just be that you don't have a clunky upper on it and it just feels a little smoother with the new upper. So, so far, really positive feelings towards this shoe. We'll see if they hold up. I feel like Nike, like someone mass ordered green dye and and by mistake or like the uh everything has been well, green do you know why they're saying that like ecto maybe like someone spoiled all their ecto cooler it's, no <laughs> is it flubber no there, <laughs> there's a reason why they're doing it okay so this is the pack color for this this year and the reason why they chose this color optically this is the most visible color in the spectrum for the human eye hmm. so they just made everything that color so they right. not everything for the first, yeah, first. Year. I mean, yeah, you got the. You get, you get, you get. Okay, okay, you got it. You got. Oh, you know what? Hand me the zoom fly. I'm telling you, right there, buddy. Okay. There you go. And here's here's the thing. If you see people lining up in these shoes, you don't even need to see the Nike swoosh. You know this color this year is Nike. And that's what they do. It's the same thing with the Vaporfly. When you saw that crimson color at the front of marathons, 
you knew what the person was wearing. Yeah. And I love what they did now to make the vapor fly a little bit more stand out to the zoom fly. The swoosh on the zoom fly is on the outside. The swoosh on the next goes over the toe this way. And the reason they said that is when they're photographing fast runners, like Kipchoge, it's always head on because it's in the front, oh, okay. not from the side. So when you look at the toes, and that's the same thing on track. Like it. You'll see the Nike puts the swoosh there because those guys are running at you and the swoosh is coming at you. That's cool. Yeah, it's each, crucial. Each shoe, when from slower to faster, the swoosh gets a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. It really does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, also the, the one The knock, bigger the swoosh, the faster the shoe. I mean, the yeah. knock I'll give on this right off the bat, $180. And that's, that's before shipping or taxes. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, I mean, if you get free shipping, taxes for me on this would be $190 for this shoe right. by the time it reaches your door. Um, I think it can hold up well. I think you can get plenty of miles on it. But that's $190. That's, that's a lot of dough for yeah. a, a normal, sh you know, like an everyday yeah. type of shoe. Yeah, not a breaking tube. Shoe. Right. But, I mean, you know how it goes. Six months from now, they'll be on sale. You'll be and, able to get and a pretty awesome colorways, probably. <laughs> yeah, they are doing some other colorways. I kind of dig the green, and at first, I really wanted the white uh, Vaporfly next, but I ended up getting the green. But I'm going to take a beautiful picture for Instagram of the whole All family the together. Green. Yeah. So, and the other thing, like, that was the thing, like, I don't know, you guys are probably too young for this, but when I was a kid, they started changing uh, fire engines from red to this kind of greenish yellow color, and because of visibility, but they phased out because people wanted the... Yeah, that never happened. happened. <laughs> I confirmed I've never seen that. It was like the new Coke of fire engines. No, dude, you've seen yellow fire engines before. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so physically, and my theory is the reason why we can see this so well is a survival instinct because green usually meant water or something was there, plants. So I love that. Human eyes. <laughs> yeah. You could so, definitely fish that for tonight. I'm going to fish it, yeah. <laughs> Run towards green the Green is life. Green is life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for the uh, turbo. Any questions on the turbo mate? Um, no. Well, in the meantime, real quick, unrelated to shoes. Talking about new Pepsi, I'm not gonna spoil anything, so don't worry. You don't have to like, you don't have to close your ears. Okay. But in Stranger Things three, the the Coke advertising, it's it's a little much at times, like hardcore in your face. Oh, because the new Coke, yeah, the yeah, new Coke. it's aggressive. Yeah, but that was a bit. You have to understand at the time. So you, yeah, what, but what year were you born? Eighty nine. Yeah, I was an eighties baby. No, no, no. <laughs> this is point. So I had like twelve days. Yeah. Yeah. When I was, when I was so growing up in the eighties, it was <laughs> wild. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah Motley Crue. Uh, what's the yeah. Chris name for? Um... Duran Duran. You would have Duran Duran. Circumcision. Yeah. 80, actually, <laughs> eighty nine. <laughs> and what was I listening to in eighty nine? Jeez. I mean, I was listening to Guns N' Roses. I, was, I mean, Guns N' Roses was the thing, but I was yeah. a Smiths guy. So I was always listening to the Smiths. I was kind of sad and depressed. I was locked away. Um, so, but yeah, I like that. I'll be sure. It's an LL Cool J. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But no, you have to understand like when it was like a, an event, you know, like now I'm trying to think of something. Now things happen really fast and they go away. So like we all get excited about women's soccer and like, okay, we're past that next, next phase. But back in the 80s, since things moved a little slower, um, you know, New Coke was like the entire year. Like, we were like, you, have you tried the New Coke? I haven't tried the New Coke. Wait till you try the New Coke. It tastes just like Pepsi. Did you tweet about it? Uh, I, they didn't tweet, but we would write letters, huh. and postcards <laughs> to each other. And be like, sent by Pony Express. Yeah, you had to draw the emojis like, New Coke, mm -hmm. smiley face. <laughs> Yeah, it has to know. Yeah. Eggplant, eggplant, eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try it. <laughs> it's actually uh, interesting about that too. Uh, the reason why they did a taste test and Pepsi, people like Pepsi eat better than Coke on a one-on-one -on -one taste test. And what it was was Pepsi sweeter. So Coke redid their formula to make it sweeter. And then they did a study well, when people actually drink an entire can uh, of yes. Coke. That's like whenever I drink is like peanut butter beers. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. For and like one. three sips later, like, this is horrible. And that's what killed it. And it's exactly what happened. It's like, mm, first sip, delicious. Yeah. yeah. Third, fourth sip, you're like, mm, 
feel real sweet. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, and that's coming from someone who likes sugar. So yeah, I if you were an animal, like sugar, you would be a hummingbird. <laughs> uh, is it, it, on a donut flower. Yeah, yeah a donut flower. Just getting into that. Yeah, that that's that's sweet. You, that's should sweet ants. Ants. <laughs> you, you should have been. You should have been a hummingbird. I'm not judging. Yeah. Um, wait, do we have any more? Yeah, I do. do we want to talk about the Cascadias? We do. We, we talked about briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Briefly. This shoe's awesome. It's like. The, that, <laughs> but wait, when we did the review online, Taylor, who's out in Colorado, and Aaron, who is running death marches, uh, <laughs> runs them all the time. Yeah. What, did, what were the overall? I think Aaron was kind of. Oh, yeah. No, she, everyone loved it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the, the outsole, the new outsole, yeah. the trail tech is awesome. Um, I mean, as you said, it's a good looking shoe. Uh, the new, I mean, I think it drains a lot better with the mud guard. You can kind of see there's a little, little like mesh. Yeah. It's like a screen door. Little mud guard here. It's nice. I like these laces. Right. It's like throw it's, back, like yeah. throw back. Like a mountain hiking boot. It yeah. fits well. It's not, I mean, I think it's, it's, Padded well. And you're doing pretty technical stuff. Like you're doing out in Patapsco, right? Yeah. And it's like now is an ounce lighter than the last version? Uh, a little over an ounce, yeah. which I think it's is a huge deal. difference in terms of a shoe. Yeah. Um. And it has this lace. You can hide your shoelaces in here. The old lace garage. But, I, but I'm gonna be honest. I keep I forgetting about it, so I've never <laughs> used it. Yeah. I don't even know. I think they moved it. Apparently they ripped it from a Solomon playbook. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Like, it did like. They're all the shoes have the same stuff. Like I feel like New Balance and Nike's heel counters you just keep going. Look similar, and so does Adidas. Like everybody's got the pull away tab with the side, side now. So. Yeah, but it's yeah. I was kind of jealous. Like I kind of wanted to run in it, but I knew I wasn't gonna be able to. So I was kind of jealous that we could all have to try. You would like this one? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I like the Brooks. I like all Brooks shoes, to be honest. With you. I just find them fit me well. And that is a strange thing. It's like just a little, little preference. I, I think I'm leaning. My, my favorites right now are uh, Nike, New Balance, and Adidas. But Brooks, I feel like, and I would say Sketches, you. They're, I feel like they're all very solid. Like, they are. Like, I think that's what I, like, where I lose right. interest is a little bit. They're all like C pluses. Yeah. No, this is way more than a C plus. A B for me. They're not gonna like fill your yeah. mind trap. <laughs> a Velcro. Yeah, that's a big, that's but a big, the, the other thing is, Brooks is always like it comes and like a lower price point than pretty much everyone for what for what you get. I mean, the most of their shoes run like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Hey, did yeah. you see? Did you see the uh, new fuel cell racer coming out? I did. Yeah, that should excite me. Yeah, well, I you doubt know, it will what? come to Yeah, me. will it? Will it excite me? Yeah. It's the rebel of bust. Yeah, that's that's the shoe. Just the one that rebel. Yeah. I want to run it. like a 5K in the Rebel and see how you do. I'll think about it. Right. When it gets a little cooler, I can't. <laughs> this heat's it's miserable. It is. It is. Nah, it's it's a, some guy was uh, giving trouble on Instagram because I said 77 with 85% humidity was miserable to run in a suit. Dude, it's. And it's he was awesome. like, I've run 120 degrees in Vegas right. and with 30, zero 30 humidity. below in. Uh, in, in Wisconsin. See, that's like, like your big. Come, that's different. Come to Boston. This is your swing. Yeah, you can put you a white hat with a brim yeah. on in Vegas. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's. have you ever heard of, uh, what's the De Death Valley race, the um, Bad Wire? Yeah, you can run in that stuff. <laughs> I mean, also, the speed project. I don't project. think that's pleasant, right? Yeah, yeah. speed, speed but yeah, they all run through speed the project, project, right? Speed project is just LA to Vegas. Maybe we should that's take a field trip. Yeah. We should go out there. I mean, I... I, I've run in the heat before. It, I think that when you get into the summer here and you're not quite, I think July is just the worst because you're not totally acclimated to it. It hits and it hits with such intensity. You open the door and it's just like, whoosh, like just heat and moistness on you. Moist. People love that word. Um, <laughs> the heat, heat and moisture just hits you so fast. Your body doesn't get a chance to, to kind of ease into the heat. Yeah. But, it's not pleasant. Yeah. Anyway, come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, Julie has a question. Yes, Julie. I'm using Rice and a New Balance 1080. It's great for easy runs, but when I do tempo pace, I end up with blisters under my big toe and forefoot in both pairs. What's the deal? Uh, what socks are you using? That sounds terrible. Do you yeah. have, what socks are you using? 
I wonder if that one is I mean, I still. If, like, Julie, tell me about the slide. Her foot sliding. It can't what? just be a soft thing. Like, but she's saying she's running tempos in it. I've run temp. I just told you, I wear like. <laughs> Synthetic socks, but from Costco. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> You're going to talk to Robbie here. Look, I'm the Can cheap sock guy. Per, per yeah. <laughs> Someone called me out for wearing uh, cotton, like Puma socks in one of their videos, you know? <laughs> Which I passed, like I seriously bought a Marshall. And, and the like, weird thing is, <laughs> like 10 bucks. he had to have like paused the video to see. Yeah, like his his foot goes by so quick, I couldn't even tell what socks he was wearing. <laughs> you have to pause it, stop it, and go. Oh, that guy's I actually I had it. thought about it before. I was like, I wonder if someone's ever gonna call me out for wearing these shitty socks. They did. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, uh, two things I would look at. Well, think, first she said she tried it with Belega blister resistant and had the same issue. Okay. Yeah. It, it might be the slap. It might be the size of your shoe. It might be too big. Which shoe was she wearing again, Meg? So the Ryan 7 and the New Balance 1080s. Okay. Are you sure you were in the right size, Julie? Because like, what that does sound like is your foot's moving around in the shoe. And obviously when you do a tempo, you're going to be putting more pressure on your uh, forefoot as you're coming through. Cause you could you're also trying be to sweating more. Pick up. You could also be sweating more. But it sounds like to me that anytime you get a blister or a hot spot, that's, that's friction. You know, right. Yeah, has Mark asked if you guys use, do you use body glide on your feet before putting on socks? Not body glide. I use it everywhere else but my feet. It's pretty much. I don't. You don't? No, not well. I don't use it on my feet. Okay, but crotch and nips. I just tried uh, the squirrels nut butter uh, last week. Yeah, that stuff works too. Okay. Yeah. I'm mean, sure it does. It's called it's nut butter. Yeah, no, I've had some that have let me down. But I mean, okay. Actually, I have no idea because I never, I never have any problems with it. Like I've, so I've gotten one blister in my entire life, and it was that fifty mile I did, like at the very end. What about, just never what about the never No, that's the one where that's my everything like goes straight to here. That's, that's your own problem. <laughs> okay. Dude, I got, I, was, a, I got a secret. I'm Dude, gonna, start what is it? The you you not, so nip guards. Uh, I've tried them. No, they're they're weird. It makes you look like you've so expensive. It too. makes you look like you've octagon to this. Yeah. It's weird. I, no one wants to see that. But if you have a band-aid and you cut off one of the sticky sides and then cut that in half, that's enough to cover your nip I and like it that. doesn't stick to all of your hair. I like that, but you know what I've used that is similar? You know, let's try to take the KT tape. KT tape, cut that up. Do you want to know what, my, what I do? Because I will start bleeding after three miles. Night. No, it's terrible. Like, I you have this is, it's Office. It's where once so it happens, it becomes it becomes you're so sensitive. Alien, alien <laughs> That'd be amazing to just get him to take it off. <laughs> I don't want to change my No, head. what I do, and this is gonna sound crazy, and I look totally insane when I'm <laughs> doing it. Every hour, <laughs> is that so? Do you know what liquid band-aid is? Yeah. So it's like you know, basically super glue. That's yeah. that's just what I do, and I like <laughs> essentially oh, you're like painting it off. How do you take it off? It's just like it, it, I mean, just like. <laughs> Well, and it works? Yeah, I've never had Like, I've gone to marathons and it won't Because it's, so, it's like such a hard shell that it doesn't... I, mean, I might try this. I might yeah. try this. Because I, <laughs> I make the mistake of when it's hot, I run without a shirt. And then when you have to wear a shirt, yeah, it's all of a sudden, it's like you've got fresh, pristine, <laughs> like, pampered nipples. Yeah, already, yeah. <laughs> the little salt gets on there. And all yeah, they're they're like, you're in part of the city. Yeah, they get damn. So anyways, yeah. that's, that's what I do. Uh, Cody highly recommends Territory Run Co. Chafe Cream. That sounds cool. Where do you get that, Cody? Heard of it. Online only? Online at Territory. 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 I think they're they're like a West Coast okay. company. Or East Coast. Is that Cody Jet? Yeah. Hi, Cody. Um, back to Julie real quick. She said her foot is narrow, but the length seems fine. Do you think oh, it's she needs to push? lace up her shoes for the, the front. Her foot sliding, mm -hmm. I would assume. Could it, that could be it. Um, I have narrow feet, and so I like something that's a little more form-fitting. Uh, the two shoes you mentioned probably wouldn't be for me. Um, not that form-fitting. <laughs> that, seriously, that is like a foot condom. That's like super tight. Um, that's what, I think that's why I like some of the Nike shoes um, that people complain about. If anybody's complaining about stuff being too tight and too narrow, that's the shoe you want uh, if you're me. Because I love, like, any review I do, and it's also, you're lucky, Julie, because most of the good looking shoes are narrow. True. Um, but they, uh, I'm not going to argue with that. I, I know. Do you get jealous every once in a while? I do. Time? You see, like, a really pretty shoe, and you're like, my, shoe, and my shoe closet me. is so I mean, gray. I wonder, like, what's a, like, I know Hoka kind of has a very narrow to the box, and 
You know, I find hook it all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Like Megan's fine with it. I'm fine with it. I that's one Julie might want to check out is the Rincon or Rincon? Rincon. Rincon. The, Rincon. Rincon. the Rebel. The Rincon, the Rebel. Uh, yeah, but you can't use a Rebel for everything. I mean, for her tempo runs, you can use it. So to answer Mo's question, Maurice. Yeah. Maurice. Maurice. His name's Mo. Maurice. Yeah. You can call him Maurice. You can call him Mo. Okay, go ahead. What's the question? He said, do you, when you're doing marathon training, oh, do you focus on weight loss? And what's the other one? What's as the, much as building miles. miles. As much as building miles. I mean, it's kind of like you don't, it, I'm struggling with, I mean, it's kind of like you don't, it, I'm struggling with that right now because I'm, I'm trying to drop a little weight for uh, the fall marathon. And I find that my energy level and my pace is also get slower when I do that. Pair that with the heat, and it really sucks to be me right now. Like, I'm slow, I'm hungry. Um, it's, 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 it's bad, but I think that you have to kind of balance it. Like you have to, you need to, it's obviously more efficient to be lighter for the marathon, but at the same time, um, you got to have the nutrition going in to, uh, fuel your runs. My problem is I'll, I'll watch my calories and then I'll save calories for vodka and vodka doesn't help with with any but you have other, no carbs. Yeah, no carbs, but it doesn't help with, uh, uh, you know, my training or, or my muscle, my recovery, or anything like that. So it, it is really hard to balance. So yeah, literally, don't even ask me this question because I <laughs> don't want to reverse that. Yeah, and Robbie weighs like a buck mountain. Yeah, it's just. I think coming with the twenty mile runs, you're gonna. I mean, weight loss is gonna happen. Does it? Um, it what about if you do twenty I, but mile I also runs get, with see, donuts? See, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> What about uh, if you satisfy all your cravings post run? No, he doesn't do it post run. No, I, no, I have. I after the past marathons in New Jersey marathon in April, when we got home, I really wanted pizza, so I got Lido's, and I pretty much ate almost the entire. Oh, yeah, I saw your stories on Instagram. It went, they went for like. I was three like, hours. I was like, I was like, I can't. The stories. I was like, like something's Long happening. The I can't stop eating. Yeah, they really cook. It's yeah. scary. Yeah, like. Uh, that, that's the thing, like, um, I always, when I see somebody who's just run a 5K and they're like, reward for running a 5K, and they're eating like a <laughs> stack of pancakes with a donut and, <laughs> and, and, and they, no, I'm like, um, that's like five times as many calories <laughs> as you actually expend it. But if they were going to eat that anyway, at least they're trying out that one of the yeah. pancakes. Like but, but here's the crazy thing, was like, if I didn't run and I posted a picture like that, like, oh, reward myself for being alive today, here's my pancakes. <laughs> That, you would be grossed yeah, out, yeah, but insane. like you're like, oh yeah, he ran a 5k, it's okay. I feel like that guy's living his life to the fullest. That's true. It depends how fast you ran that 5k too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I think people are frustrated with your uh, technical difficulties. And Jim <sighs> said, I'm gonna need some speed elites in an eight and a half to stay on here. <laughs> All right, you've got it. Send your address to. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. <laughs> We're back on. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> so All right. But um, you can have my speed elites. Anything else? Besides, any, any other questions? That's you gotta get That's Robbie. Kind of my range. You're in the Robbie zone. Yep. Wide. Tiny. Tiny. Someone tiny earlier tiny. asked if you had any tips for running in the heat, but yeah. Don't I do, yeah, if you can avoid it, do that. I, I mean, the main key is, I mean, hydrate, and I don't always follow my rules, but especially like tonight, I should really, uh, you know, make sure I get all my ounces of water in before I go for a run, have an electrolyte drink uh, in the morning, and then uh, take a salt tablet about 20 minutes before I go out for my run. Uh, bring water. Yeah, bring water. Um, yeah, so, like, just carry a handheld, and, like, don't... Don't matter. It doesn't matter if you don't look cool or whatever. I know, like, there's so I don't think you think people. I think people think that. You refused. I think there's people that are running. 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 Yeah, but that's a different thing. I was like, that's a different thing. It was not a different thing. It is. I'm a germaphobe, dude. <laughs> so like, I'm not gonna drink out of somebody else's water bottle. Oh, or, or also, I remember, I would have died in the street. Didn't want, <laughs> here, here are my two tips. If you live in a city, know where there's water spigots yeah. in places or water fountains you can either stop or just like put your hat under or whatever. If you run in the country. No, where there's a creek and just jump in and then run because that's what I do whenever I'm back on the I mean, it is nice. It is nice. Even on the, um, what's the trail? The NCR trail, you 
Meg and I have cooled off in the yeah in the water. But the main thing is like know yourself. If you start getting woozy or start getting dizzy, um, obviously slow down the pace. But like Meg, you cut your run short last week because you were just like starting to feel lightheaded, and and that's the thing is the, you know I know all of us want to if we have 16 miles on the calendar, right? We're like gotta do 16, and some days. You know, it, it's really hard uh, to do that. But the same thing I'd say if you're running in freezing cold temperature and your fingers start to fall off, uh, you got to stop, you know, and uh, regroup. And it's not going to, like, ruin your training spot. No. Like, you know, Dude, I think off. also you... Although I would probably just finish the 16 you because would. I'm, like, an idiot. Well, like, like, training in the summer is terrible, and I feel like everyone feels a crap. And then, like, shockingly fall comes, and then you're like, whoa. Where did all that come from? Yeah, but I, every year I go through the same thing where I'm like, I get into major depression in July because my paces all go up. And I look at my training and I'm like, how am I ever going to run? <laughs> how am I ever going to run a marathon in this pace when I can't even do like and easy miles? And that's why you have a coach. Yeah. Go to hell some I'm actually, I'm actually to talking to Adrian game. today. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is Kevin. Mm. He says he loves the reviews on the new show. He's 6'4", 230 pound weightlifter. Uh, he was seen by a yeah. running yeah. store and told he my, mildly overpronates and was sold the sold by STs. However, he's looking to get new shoes as he got a blister. Uh, he's wondering if you have any recommendations for heavier runners. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna lo enjoy getting that extra cushion and that much pressure on your joints and, and uh, that much weight coming down is is obviously going to benefit from more cushion. I, I would say uh, Clifton 6 would probably be a really nice shoe for you. It's got a nice stable, see you overpronate a little bit. It's got a stable platform without being a stability shoe, which I think is always a plus. Um, so it's wide all the way down, so that keeps you stable. Uh, it's got tons of cushioning and stacks, so that's going to help protect your joints. And it's light enough that you can feel fast in it. So. Definitely check out the Clifton Six. This would be my recommendation on that one. And thick soles are in, so you don't have to worry about. Them. Yeah. And how tall are you? How tall is he? Six four. Six four. You get the Clifton Six, you're gonna be like <laughs> six eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you can be going to the NBA. I think uh, for that, a good option, and because I, I have a program, I actually really, I still continually run in the glycerin, the Brooks glycerin oh, seventeen. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's more of a neutral shoe, but it's though. it's definitely very cushioned, but it's not overly cushioned to the point where like the Rebel, I, I can feel when I'm going slower, my ankle's going in this, I'm yeah. perfectly fine with. It's a little bit heavier of a shoe, but it's, it's also gonna last you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, try those too, yeah. see how it goes. We'd love to hear how it works out for you. And uh, yeah, maybe we need a reviewer on here that's- and Oh wait, I think we might, we're back. We're back, we're back. Yeah. All right. Maybe or we're, lag a little bit. It's running on here. Okay. Yeah. Is right. that a greener shoe or a more yellow shoe? Yeah, I love the Razor 3. I think it's one of the best shoes I've ever run in, period. Um, it's like when you talk about this versus Zoom Fly, this is light, agile. This is a great shoe. I just don't feel that the uh, Zoom Fly has the nice, light, spring in your step feeling that this uh, Razor 3 has. I think if this had had a, a Nike Swish on it, this would be everybody's shoe of the freaking decade. Good One last question. More? Speed Goat 3 is for a 50k. Thoughts? Uh, well, I had... Mm, I wish I knew what kind of 50k I get the more... Is it very technical or... I don't know. What, what, what is the terrain like on the 50k? Is it like fire roads or are we talking technical terrain, roots, rocks, all that stuff? I mean... Terrain, roots, rocks, all that stuff. I mean, so I, don't, I had the Speed Goat 2 mid, which is really just like... The, it's the same thing. and Not, not much change with the 3. Mountain run. Mountain, Mountain run. I mean, it'll be comfortable. Like I, I'm a little. I never loved the traction on the speed goat. I know that sounds crazy, but I loved it better on. Like I said, like I ran with the Topo Mountain Racer, which is like my favorite trail shoe. Um, and it, I think that would will be excellent for 50k because it is like somewhat racy, but it also has like that awesome. Yeah. So we don't know why. We'll see how this one goes. Fifth but if you're watching time. this uh, video, uh, this we might have to put the description. Skip past the parts where it freezes. Yeah, don't give up if it's working. Yeah, it's a spinning wheel for a room. All right, we're gonna call it. Yeah.